So hi and welcome to another episode of Quick Expert Reviews. This time we've got a 2001 Lexus GS300 Mark II um, that we're going to review. Now that is the inline 6 model and not the 430 V8. However, it is of the SE trim, so at that point the most you could get. So a bit of a boxy shape. Some people says it looks like a Mercedes, but there is a reason behind that actually it doesn't look like Mercedes. The Mercedes E-Class looks like the GS, but I will cover that in a second. Now, this phone was actually designed by 151 people. Um, so for example, these front lights, the small bits, people say it looks like a Mercedes, but no, they're actually taken from the SC model Sport Coupe. Uh, which was unveiled in 1993 and then adopted into the second generation um, GS. Now 150 people from very various backgrounds. So as you can see, there are a lot of fots in here, a very short nose, but the car is very wide. That's purely because they were BMW drivers, Mercedes drivers, like everyday drivers like us, people that drive for a living and so on, so on. So there were a lot of engineers, a lot of normal people that were given a questionnaire, questionnaire and uh, to answer about what they want to see in the car um, and why is it so different from the first generation GS I'll cover later on as well but yeah it is pretty big I'm not gonna lie however it's pretty short as in like it's it's fine inside but you do feel like uh, you're driving a pancake it's 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 quite short it's not small but it's short um, trunk massive trunk easily takes three dead bodies in so you shouldn't have an issue with that if you're planning on using your car for this. No, it's it's actually really, really, really big. Not as big as the LS430 that I had before. However, definitely bigger than the, my third generation Lexus GS450H, um, which is which which is an amazing addition, and the pram go fits easily as well. You've got an antenna which doesn't work, which is a common issue with the second generation GSs. So yeah, let's open the back doors and yes, so that is the actual back of the car. Now do bear in mind, I have not moved the seat at all. Um, so I'll show you in a second how much leg space I've got. And to be honest, it's not that bad. You do obviously do have the ventilation. You do have the cup holders in the armrest, but also what's nice is that you've got a heating on your feet as well. So. Um, as you can see, I'm fitting pretty well, to be honest. I'm 185 uh, centimeters tall and works pretty well. So I do have some like it's it's not as it doesn't go. The back is not as narrow as in the third generation where I felt like this. Uh, it's it's actually pretty space and pretty spacious in 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 the back. So that's the front. Like I said, I have not moved the chair at all. These are the um, vents and obviously the sunroof or the moonroof. I don't know what's the difference, to be honest. I think one is American, one is a British way of saying. Um, but yeah, let's stick to the sunroof, even if it's an American way. Now let's go to the front of the car and let's sit in it. I uh, absolutely love this space in here. Um, the gauges go uh, when you turn the ignition on they come alive uh, which is a really nice feature which i'll show you in a second obviously the steering wheel goes to you so yeah it's like there's nothing there and all of a sudden you do have this nice gauges now what's brilliant is that the backlight it actually feels like um an iphone using the night sh night shift mode it's really really pleasant to your eyes and it's really comfortable now if you'd like to you can adjust the uh, density of the lighting however it's also automated so if you're in a tunnel or if you're driving at night it's going to automatically dim the um, gauges you've got the electric mirrors obviously um, you do have a really cool um, card holder in here that actually <laughs> gives you your uh, card that's my parking card so it works pretty well and you can keep some coins in there as well you've got the trunk operation and the fuel 
um, lever as well. You've got the fully automatic uh, electric window. So you just press once and the window goes automatically down. You can lock the windows, you can lock the doors as well. I didn't go for the sat-nav unit probably purely because I do want to put my own uh, tablets inside but as you can see it's pretty well laid out obviously it does look old the car is 17 years old now but it does uh, its job it's a Nakamichi premium sound system um, so it's not not that bad it's actually pretty decent it's not Mac Levinson that I had in the LS430 and the GS458 but yeah now I did order one of these which is a Grom uh, integrated Bluetooth audio which uh, means uh, which allows you to stream music uh, from your phone you just have to take the internal unit and um, put it in the back now I do have the CD changer here as well and what is that this is actually pretty decent so it's a GS300 a brief introduction to the Lexus GS300 that's decent um, so yeah, that's the glove compartment, which is pretty spacious. Again, um, these are, that's the um, audio bit. So you do have the headlamp washers if you do have the HID lamps. And if not, then you still get it. Obviously, you do get the cruise control, which you apparently you don't get on some of the Audis or even BMWs nowadays. Fully electric seats with the lumbar support, uh, everything is electric, so don't worry, uh, you won't be, uh, you, you won't spend too much time fiddling with the levers, levers, and then we've got the dual zone climate control, so the passenger can have their own uh, climate, uh, as in their own temperature, uh, obviously you do have the heated, uh, heated uh, mirrors, automatic um, climate control which is brilliant in my opinion and so what it does is that when you leave it in auto and you turn the engine on it actually doesn't work for the first two three minutes purely because it's waiting for the engine to warm up and you don't get all the fuel fumes in the car which is pretty nice uh, especially in a car from 2001 um, as opposed to my previous Honda for example that when you turn the uh, um, heating on Obviously, uh, you could smell all the gasoline and all that jazz. Now, obviously, if you'd like to get audio tune, you can um, you can uh, switch between different um, um, equalizer settings, so like bass, treble, and so on, so on. You want to listen to the music in the front, in the back, left, right. You do have the traction control, which is VSC vehicle stability control. You've got the heated seats, uh, very warm, very very warm. Um, when they do heat up and they do heat up really fast and then you've got the power ECT which is normal and snow mode so power uh, it allows you to change the it actually changes the gear uh, it doesn't change the gear as fast as in normal mode and snow mode um, slows down the wheel spin uh, when you are pressing the gas the accelerator pedal now um, this you do have the wood and plastic bits in here so obviously I would not like as much plastic but this is what it is and the gear lever actually operates in manual mode as well which I'll explain later on but the armrest is pretty uh, decent so obviously you do have two compartments and then you've got the charger so you've got one charger in here as in like cigarette um, lighter charger and then you've got another one in the front where you've got the ashtray so you can actually power up two devices and it's all laid out really nicely then you've got the sunglass compartment and you do uh, if it, it's actually interesting i've checked and it opens as fast as the steering wheel adjusts when you turn the ignition on so um i love small things like that and um, Apart from that, you've got the aspherical rear view mirror and the side wing mirrors, which means that when it's dark or at night, the mirrors um, auto dim themselves um, so that no one that's driving behind you is, um, uh, is, is, is like um, blinding you or anything. Uh, the sunroof is uh, absolutely completely automatic so you just press the bus button once and it goes to the back on its own and the same uh, when you do when it goes slides back in to lock it 
that's the rear view mirror. Like I said, if you want, you can turn off the auto dimming feature, uh, but I always have it on because I don't like to be blinded by other uh, people's um, beams. So it's a nice addition. I think one of my favorite gadgets, to be honest, on this car, if you, if you can call it a gadget. And the rear view mirror is absolutely massive. So not only the rear, uh, rear, um, uh, window is, 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 is like huge. It's actually the, the whole mirror is massive as well, which uh, really helps in parking uh, purely because the car is quite wide. It's it's actually the wheelbase is 20 millimeters short, uh, narrower than the LS430, which does tell a lot uh, in terms of that. So yeah, that's the interior covered. I will jump into the front of the car in a second and we'll take it for a ride. Okay, so how does it drive? Let's find out. As usual with Lexus cars, the steering wheel goes uh, is tilted towards you. So a bit of history about the second generation GS, purely because I feel like you, we, like you all need to know how important it was for um, Lexus to release the second generation GS. Or how uh, maybe it wasn't. Um, so, the first generation uh, Grand Sedan from Lexus wasn't really a spectacular su success, especially in the US where the Lexus was mainly marketed. Um, first of all, it wasn't as fuel efficient, as spacious inside as the equivalent 7 Series or the E-Class Mercedes. Uh, second of all, the car was a bit cumbersome in terms of like maneuvering the car in the ma in the actual traffic. Uh, these were the main complaints before they decided to make the second generation. Uh, first thing was uh, third thing was that um, the boot was smaller as opposed to the competition again, and you know they, they've just launched the brand. Uh, with the flagship LS, so they had to nail it. To be honest, they've even considered slashing the Aristo GS model completely from the lineup, which is what will probably happen now anyway. Um, but yeah, Lexus being Lexus, they've actually challenged themselves and thought, you know what, no, we're going to make up for it. Or even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream that one day this nation will rise up. Hiroyuki Watanabe um, was moved away from the project. He was the guy that actually um, designed and was overlooking the first generation um, GS. Um, he wasn't like, you know, sacked or anything like that. He was actually promoted to chief engineer. Um, so that's, that shows you how committed Lexus was to making the second generation Aristo and GS as good as it possible. The whole design was given to Yasushi Nakagawa. So Yasushi Nakagawa joined Toyota in 1971 um, after finishing Keio University. And that was his first project. Um, so yeah, after over 20 years working for Toyota, guy must have been really, really um, good that he was actually, you know, responsible for the, the whole design was meant to be changed. Moritaka Yoshida. So Moritaka Yoshida um, was supposed was supposed was worked on the suspension and. Uh, Miss Yoshida-san uh, is quite a name. This guy has actually worked on a suspension for the MK4 Supra, the Toyota Soare, Lexus SC, and interestingly enough, the Lexus LS. Yep. So again, it looks like Lexus picked up all the best people, Toyota Lexus, uh, back then. All the best people they wanted to um, to design a car like this and yeah this is what happened so how different the car is from the first generation GS actually a lot so all that's left after the first generation GS 
is the the battery the crankshaft assembly um, so everything else is different obviously obviously the engine um, you might say no it's still a 2JZ G that's the that's the that's the engine in this car but then again the engine has a VVTi um, technology in it it's more fuel efficient as with every Lexus when you've got a facelifted model or a next generation uh, it's actually faster as well and this is this is actually a fun fact so I've recently purchased OBD2 which I've plugged into the OBD2 port um, apart from that I've also um, downloaded an app which works with it uh, which is called 0 to 60 and I've measured because the when the second generation GS was released uh, in a 3 litre disguise that was interesting uh, in UK we only had the 3 litre engine that's it so the S trim which was lacking the uh, lever upholstery for example um, had a time of 7.6 to 60 and the SE was 8.2 this is an SE and guess what after 17 years you've just seen it's still 8.2 to 60 how amazing is that 17 years later okay so we've covered that Autocar has said that actually it isn't that different from the first generation what but yeah whatever especially in terms in the looks department I'm like are you for real you've got the history covered let's focus down on the car so there will be a lot of comparison to the 3GS which I used to have there will be some comparisons to the LS430 which I had as well even the Honda Accord I've recently drove so one might think why would you compare that car to a Honda Accord like first of all the car is in a roughly the same uh, price as a Honda Accord from 2001 2002 second of all you might want to know which one is more expensive to run or not which is more fuel efficient or not and I'm gonna compare it to a two litre uh, petrol engine I never had an opportunity to drive a 2.4 litre K24 um, Accord so I can't really say much about performance but my two litre Accord gave me around 120 miles of town driving for 20 quid now this one does around 90 to 100 miles so not that bad not that far off considering that this car weighs around 1750 kilos um, I do apologize I'm Polish I have no idea how much it is in pounds and second thing is that it's actually handling really well now in my opinion the Ford Mondeo I used to have and the Honda Accord were my favorite cars in terms of um, road handl uh, handling where they were absolutely amazing in my opinion um, I really loved how precise the steering is and to be honest I was slightly worried that this is gonna be more wallowy more like you know a yacht type of driving experience like an LS430 but that shows you how committed the Lexus and Toyota Lexus engineers were uh, to make this car as good as possible so not only it handles really well it actually handles like a front-wheel drive car up until obviously you are in a corner and you press the uh, gas pedal you floor it and then the rear goes uh, wide and then you get a smile on your face and you're so happy that you're actually enjoying driving again uh, second of all it actually has so much space inside it's unreal so I'm 185 centimeters tall 80 kilos that's my weight and not only it's very comfortable it's actually I feel like I could put a, another person in here probably my wife yeah that sounds like a good plan um, and we would still be comfortable if you can call it comfortable um, yeah another thing is that in terms of the rear seats uh, recently we drove we did quite a, I wouldn't call it the big distance but it was around 30 miles and there was an adult person sat between two child seats 
and I've said to her, listen, I'm going to do a review of the car soon. I really need to know how do you feel? How does it feel to sit on that uh, middle seat? Because it's really important for me. And she said, three things. It's very comfortable. What car is it? Where do I buy it? And I was like, okay, all right. That's, that's kind of enough for me. That's, that's all I wanted to hear. She said it's very comfortable. She said, even though she sat between two child seats, uh, it is really comfortable. It actually feels like a normal seat. So it's not like, you know, you wouldn't put a worse enemy inside. The second thing is that she was around 175 centimeters tall and with a 3GS, uh, the thing I kind of didn't like is that the back roof was sloping really fast. So I know it looks sexy, it looks modern and so on when you look from the outside, but when you put someone in the middle seat and you know, he's, he's an average adult, you're like, shit, the, the roof is going really, um, it's really narrow and they might hit the head. Now in here, Cabin, cabin is so spacious it's actually not an issue it's not an issue at all um, so that's that the ride comfort is obviously unreal as opposed again to Honda Accord it's serene it's like when you're stuck in the traffic let's say you finish your work and you go home and you're like okay in order to go home I'm gonna be stuck in the traffic and I really want to I really don't want to do it. I really want to relax and this is what you get when you buy a Lexus. It's so serene, it's so it's so quiet in here. And it's not only in like, you know, CD driving. So also if you go on a motorway, that's a big boss. If you go on a motorway and you drive around like 70 miles per hour, it's still quiet. To be honest, the first thing when, when I bought the car and I took it home and I, I've asked my wife, what do you think? And she was like, is this a hybrid? And I'm like, no, it's a normal petrol engine. And she's like, wow, it's so quiet. I'm like, it's a Lexus, hi. Um, so yeah, in terms of like refinement, comfort, yeah, top marks. Um, again, it's not a hybrid, obviously, so you will hear the engine. There is a bit of a vibration, I would say, but it's not like it's not something you would notice really. It's, I'm trying to be picky because it's something you do notice in a Honda, but it's not much. The, it's not something you would um, actually feel in an Lexus. Um, so apart from that, what are the bad bits? Um, First of all, the car is big. I think it's like the wheelbase is like 12, 20 millimeters narrower than the LS430, so it's big. And considering we're in UK and yeah, the streets and roads and everything is uh, very narrow, this is not a good thing. It's easy to park. It's very easy to park in terms of like you know turning around and all that jazz. But in terms of finding a space, oh no, 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 no. It's, it's actually pretty hard. Um, the other bad bits would be the brake assistant controller, so brake assist controller. So I don't know if anyone has read any reviews on the Honest John website, it's actually quite out of date right now. Uh, but to be honest, um, there was a bit of a fear, so the pre-facelift models um, did have a brake assistant controller, so if it fails and it's connected to ABS, it costs £3,000 to fix, which is weird considering the car can be bought from anything between £1,000 and £2,000. First of all, the prices have dropped, it's around £400, and second of all, uh, you should be really worried only if you have a pre-facelift model, nothing to worry about in a post-facelift, uh, which is from 2001 onwards up to 2004. Um, the good things though are the prices, so a set of Brembo brakes and I absolutely love how this car turns. The, set of Brembo brakes for front uh, that would be brake parts, four brake parts and two brake discs that's 
99 pounds from Eurocar parts. That is a Mondeo money. That is not, I think I've paid the same amount of money for Honda. Um, parts, what else? Oil filters, I mean, the, these are just standard prices. I'm just trying to think about something expensive. Um, I don't think that the 2JZ GE can go wrong. Uh, just make sure you look after the coolant levels and the coolant itself. So, e-shift. A lot of people are wondering, how does e-shift work? So, up, down, what do you do? So, what happens? Like, when the, why would you use e-shift? It's a auto for a reason. Now, first of all, all e-shift works from second gear uh, up to fifth. And you've got the down open, which I've explained at the very beginning of the video. Well, I, I'm probably one of those people that uh, use Lexus cars for other reasons than just driving in a serene luxury. I usually take the cars to track days uh, and track. But also, what I've noticed, it's just fun to drive when you're taking a corner and you just downshift. It's so much more uh, fun to just take these corners, it's unreal. So I'm so happy that it actually does have e-shift. The e-shift is only available on the post facelift models of a 300. Uh, not available in the 430, weirdly enough, which is a more performance oriented car. But yeah, really enjoying that. Um, also, when you do a kick down on a motorway, it goes down by two gears. If you use e-shift, you can just drop it from fifth to fourth. And then obviously, um, use it to upshift and downshift um, to your liking. So you actually get more control over the car. It's still an auto and it still won't let you break the engine or do some damage to the engine. Uh, but at least you've got some substitute for a manual um, transmission. Thanks for watching another episode of Quick Expert Reviews. Hope you've really enjoyed it. If you do have any questions, please let me know in the comments section. If you want to see a different car reviewed, let me know. I might try and get it. Now, do bear in mind that all the cars I review are the cars I own. Uh, these are the car I buy. I do not rent any cars. So, I'm not sponsored or endorsed by any brand or anything like that. I just like Lexuses in general, but I drive all kind of cars. Um, so, yeah. Have a great day, guys. Bye.